We have a knack for moving on really crappy days and so it's very windy out, very rainy, but it's also a good day to move because we didn't have any excursions or anything planned. Well, we decided to not go to Whittier today. We we're staying at the Willowa National Forest Campground. I, I love National Forest Campgrounds, but the National Forest website suck as far as campground information. And I wasn't really sure we'd be able to get a spot here just because it looks like there's only a couple spots that are first come first serve online. Well, I got to talking to the campground host and there's 60 sites here, only 17 are reservable. He said, yeah, it's not really clear online at all how many sites are first come first serve. There's tons of them. This campground supposedly has great views, but the weather is really bad today. And you see us getting all geared up in our heavier rain gear. Uh, Boggs Visitor Center is about a mile and a half. So we're gonna go do a walk up to that direction. Here's the problem with uh, filming and um, rain makes it a little more, more difficult. That's why we're talking inside here that way because the raindrops hit the mic and it makes it sound really mm -hmm. staticky and crackly. So that's a bit of a problem sometimes, but we'll, we'll try to capture what we can in the rain. We'll just take the mic off the GoPro and we're good. If you're curious what it sounds like, go check out some of our Scotland videos. Yeah. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> anyway, let's go for a walk. but it's also the one that goes to the visitor center and but it's really pretty it's nasty out here but this is a cool trail Whew, that was an intense walk, blowing wind, driving rain, and now we're back. Rhonda's uh, got, went to the, the hand pump water thing at the Forest Service campground and it's filling up one gallon jug. She's sticking a couple in the tank. We've got some water going into our Berkey, so at least the water here is pumpable, <laughs> unlike the last place. Uh, one of the issues we have, obviously, is when our stuff is really wet. Uh, one of the reasons we don't like to go out in the, the dumping rain is we just don't have a place to dry our stuff. But I've got my raincoat and rain pants hanging up in the bathroom, and then Rhonda gets back, we'll hang hers up in there too, and hopefully they'll get somewhat dry, but it is what it is, and it was nice getting out for uh, some good exercise anyway. Trailer, some boats to the right. $22 for truck and trailer to go through the Whittier Tunnel. So this goes this way towards Whittier from Bear Valley, every hour on the half hour, 8.30, 9.30, 10.30, blah, 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 and then the other direction on the hour, every hour. And then that also allows for the occasional train tra traffic to go through. So they do a really good job of making sure that everybody is properly spaced. So they have these sequencing lights as you leave so everybody gets a lane but once your lane goes they also have a timing light these cars are supposed to maintain 35 feet i think we are supposed to keep like 500 and then the trucks are 1500 
Here we go. Oh, that's a cool little tunnel entrance. Well, we've arrived in Whittier. We took our little trip from Hope through the tunnel and arrived in Whittier. All right, well, because of this driving rain, it's not just a little drizzle. It's been dumping rain now. We're on probably day three or four of just dumping rain. It's a little hard to film stuff and show you what, what Whittier is like, but uh, this town was kind of sprung from World War II when the Japanese uh, invaded the Aleutian chain and this was kind of a good place to, for a, an army outpost basically and so there's one condo here where all the residents live in the same building it's, it's kind of a funky little town but it's also a big cruise ship terminal so uh, there's a huge lack without cruise ships there's really not a lot of people here but there's a couple shops and you know a couple charters a couple of fishing charters kayak you know spots and there's a little tunnel that goes from the under the tracks over to here oh there you are Whee! What you doing? Walking through a tunnel. Walking through a tunnel. Never walking through a tunnel. Hello. 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 What do you think? We're at the end. We're gonna walk out of the rain. Yeah. <laughs> we found the end of the tunnel. And there are uh, two campgrounds. There's one on the left as you come out of the, the tunnel. It's more of a parking lot. And then there's this, this one here. It's called Creekside uh, Campground. And there's a creek right over there. That's probably part of what you're hearing. And uh, $20 a night, no hookups, first come, first serve. And uh, yeah, this is actually a pretty decent little little campground. That most of the spots are pretty unlevel. Uh, we found a good one that we didn't have to unhook because we didn't need to. Uh, other than that, it's a good good spot to stop for a night or two if you're here and if you want to take the ferry across. And this is one of the few times where I would say that living in a really tiny space kind of sucks a little bit. Yeah. But I'd rather do, be dealing with this in the 100 degree heat in the Pacific Northwest. So, you know, pick your poison as far as, as bad weather. Uh, so you can see behind us, got tons of stuff hanging up. So what is our issue the last two days? Not water, not enough water, and too much water. Hmm. So we've got a lot of exterior water, but we couldn't get any in our interior <laughs> water tank. And that started in Hope. In Hope. Anyway, it's been a uh, nonstop rain. The other thing that we had happen was a cruise we were supposed to do yesterday. So I signed us up for a Prince William Sound uh, Glacier Cruise. It was going to be about six, uh, about five and a half, six hours. And we got on board and it was jam packed and no mass required. So we both felt really uneasy with that and we ended up getting off the boat. Uh, now every other boat we've been on or tour we've been on has been mass uh, required. And as far as I could tell, it's still a federal requirement for uh, transportation and commercial vessels. So I'm not sure what was going on there, but they did refund our money. So that was awesome. But uh, you know, it kind of leads us to a question for you. Please put those in the comments below. As far as what's your comfort level with travel right now? We felt super uneasy with that many people i mean literally about the, the 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 boat was packed it was probably 300 people in a really tight space and really bad weather so most people weren't going to be outside 
I think most people are gonna be inside the boat all day. The, the catamaran that we were going to take this trip on was mostly inside, really, and I mean, it's locked, pretty much locked down. You can go outside, but it's uh, kind of not something that you would do when you're actually traveling, unlike a ferry where people are going out on the backside. Yep. And then uh, our other issue is, uh, you know, we still like to try and get out in the rain. The problem is once our stuff is wet, we can't get it dry again. <laughs> we had everything hanging up in the bathroom at one point and it wasn't getting dry. Yeah, we had, we had to do that, excuse me. We had to do that because we couldn't put the awning out and hang it out here. Right, so it was so windy at the last yeah. spot. Yeah. So and then even though we have the awning out, we have stuff hung out since yesterday, it's still not getting dry. So I took some stuff to the, the laundromat here at the uh, the one condo building that everybody in this town lives in. They have a tiny two washer, two dryer, little mini laundromat. So I dried our stuff and then we immediately went out and got it all soaked all over again. So I might end up going back just to get our, our stuff dry a second time because otherwise we just, everything, our, our jackets and even my tech pants are just soaking wet still. It's just nothing's getting dry here, and that's kind of a it's kind of hard to deal with stuff when you can't get it dry. Well, it's almost 100% humidity. I mean, it's that wet. But the good thing is, I mean, the bad thing is that the ceiling here is really low, so we can't really show you a lot of great footage of the mountains here. But on the plus side is because of all the rain, then you have a ton of waterfalls and all of these fingers of water coming down the mountain so we'll show you that and how full the stream is i mean that part of it is just awesome when you think about nature mother nature in that respect mm -hmm. it's just that you're not going to get the beautiful views we would have liked to have shared and we're not going to have footage from the glacier which probably would have also been overcast and maybe not all that hot anyway but <laughs> we'll have more glaciers i think yes. the weather's supposed to get better and we're heading to valdez so in valdez. just a couple hours we'll be getting on the ferry aurora and we're going to be going from whittier to valdez across prince william sound so even though we didn't get the tour boat yesterday we're taking the ferry across and that'll be fun and there's tons of waterfalls and tons of glaciers that are probably more easily accessible from valdez